morning, praise the Lord. Glad you was able to tune in today. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful name of Jesus. The name's above every name. Rejoice in all the new covenant benefits and blessings we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, you saved us, you delivered us, you redeemed us, you sent Jesus in our life that we might have life no more abundantly. So we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's start Bibles here in the third, third John, right before Revelation of Jude. Third John, the scripture says here in verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell. He is a soul prosper. Now, as believers, we want to focus on what Jesus did for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, the scripture said, For you know through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. Now, we need to know this because every day of our life, we're going to need to depend on God to meet all of our needs in abundance. You know, we, we, we can't depend on the world. Thank God for the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And so no matter what the world goes through, you and I can go through this, go through this life unscathed and not have to lack for any good thing. We, could, we need to have an abundant eye, an abundant heart, that we look for abundance in Jesus' name and everything we see, that we look, listen for abundance. And we're not listening to anything, doubt and unbelief, disqualify us to receive from God. Now back over here again, let's go back over to Galatians again, in Galatians chapter three. Now the scripture says here in verse 13, verse 14, and verse 29, Christ has redeemed us to curse the law. Being made a curse for us, written curse every tree, that the blessed of Abraham might from the Gentiles of Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise through through faith. Now verse 29 says, And if you be Christ, then Abraham's seed and there is according to promise. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, For you know through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Now these verses of Scripture, along with others, we need to become very familiar with them and just train ourselves, renew our mind to God's word that God wants us to live in abundance. The world goes through all kinds of crises. Yeah, all kinds of stuff happens in the world. But we should go through this life untouched by anything in the world. They'll always live in abundance. Like even Isaac, in the midst of famine, sowed, received a hundredfold return in that same year. And that's how the kind of mindset, concept, heart, faith, believing we need to have as believers. They're always reminding ourselves every day, my God is my, su uh, my support and my supply. He supports me in life. He says I can do all things through Christ's strength me. He reminds me of his word, his covenant that he made and gave us, that he made with Jesus Christ. Jesus is not going to fail the covenant. God's not going to fail the covenant. We're the benefit of, factor of it. We get the be benefits and blessings of it. And Jesus said, I'm come, they might have life, no more abundantly. Now, many times people think, oh, that's good. You know, No, it's real important that we really build ourselves up that we have in the side of our mind and our heart that God's gonna take care of us in abundance. Not just barely get by, but no, live in an abundance, that we don't lack for any good thing. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. And we need to realize, trust God this, in this, that we not just barely get by just getting our needs met, but we live in abundance. It depends on how we believe. I mean, some people, you know, barely, as Christians, born again, barely just get by financially. Well, and they'll tell you, you know, thank God the Lord came through. And then some go through, you know, they, they have their needs and met. It may be a little bit left, left over. And they'll say, well, thank God, God gave me a little bit left over. But you could go all the way and believe God for a bunch. You have too much that your cup runs over. And thank God for whatever level a person's at. But it's based on what you choose to receive. And the more you have in abundance of finances, the more comfortable your life can be, the more choices you have, the more you can do. It's just like walking in divine health. When you're healthy and whole, you can do so much more. And God wants us financially prosperous, and he wants us physically to have good health. He said so because he said he wished above all things that we prosper, and be in health is a soul prosper. So we need to take God's promises very seriously and know that God, it's God's will that we live in abundance financially. We're an heir of Abraham's blessing. And think about what God did for Abraham. He made Abraham prosperous. It was in his covenant. It's in our covenant too. Not only we got the new birth, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God dwell inside of us and seated in the heavenly place with Christ Jesus, all the spiritual blessings, but we have all the physical blessings that God had given Abraham in that covenant. And we need to realize that our cup should run over. We're blessed going in, blessed going out, that we have too much in every area of our life. That way we can do what we want to with it. You know, we, we, don't, we don't have to be concerned about our finances. So often, good hearted Christian people seemingly struggle financially through their whole life. Yet maybe they tithe and maybe they give offerings. But it's just somehow they don't get out of the struggling financially. 
Well, what we can do is resolve this. First of all, we go to the Word. We do what God's Word says to do. And then we watch everything we say and what we think about. We don't let our, our mouths talk, doubt and unbelief. You know, use the word like that's too expensive. Or let our minds think that way. Like, tell us you'll never have that. If you're going to have it, you'd have it by now. You know, this financial prosperity message has never worked for you. And people, you know, can even go as far as thinking they don't believe in saying they don't believe in the prosperity gospel. Again, there's only one gospel. There's only one Jesus. He did it all for us. He gave us new life in Christ Jesus. He made us new creatures in Christ Jesus. And he blessed us with Abraham's blessing. And he became poor that we through his poverty might be rich. And there's nothing wrong with having wealth and riches in our house. There's nothing wrong with money. It's who has it. And you know, what we always do is show God. We put him first. We tithe. We give. And the, the more money we make, the more money comes to us, the more money that, that we have access to, hey, the more our tithe's going to be, the more blessing we're going to be the work of God. And, and, and regardless, God wants us blessed because we're his children. We don't have to have some, come excuse why I'd want to be blessed. No, we don't need to come up with a reason. We are blessed. It's God's idea to bless us, give us everything he had. All the Father has is ours. And God hasn't withhold anything. He's given us all things to pertain to life and God to the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. So we need to have knowledge of what Jesus did for us. And just train our minds to feed on, the God, on God's word, taking prosperity scriptures and decreeing and declaring every day that we are everything the word of God says we have, what the word of God says we have that we have, uh, are prosperous and have wealth and rich in our house, that we begin to visualize and see ourselves as blessed financially. It takes some effort on our part because we're renewing our mind to God's word. But nevertheless, it's so important because Christians, believers are gonna need this more every day. God wants his people, his church to be prosperous. It was God that gave the children of Israel the wealth of Egypt. It was God that saw to it their bodies were healed. There were not one feeble person among them when they left Egypt. They did what God said. They applied the blood to their house. They ate of the lamb, and look what happened to them. So blessed, and God led them to the, what we call the land, the promised land, the land that flowed with milk and honey. All they have to do is go possess it. It's, it's already been given to them. But the 10 spies persuaded the rest of the children of Israel not to go in. It was Caleb and Joshua that wanted to go in, but the rest of them talked. Actually, what the rest of them said, God said was an evil report. To talk contrary to what God has promised us is wrong. It's Satan that comes, steals, steals and destroys. It's Satan that doesn't want us to have anything. It's our Father God that wants to, to receive all that he has, all that he's given us in Jesus' name. And that's how we receive. Father God, I just want to thank you. I receive my healing. I receive my health that Jesus bought and paid for. I receive all my financial needs met in abundance in Jesus' name. And decreeing and declaring that your bills are paid in Jesus' name that God is teaching you how to profit, how to prosper in your life. And every day of your life, just keep renewing your mind, speaking those promises, renewing your mind to God's promises, saying this is what God says, and making your mind think in line with God's word. Make your mind see yourself prosperous and blessed in every area of your life. And, you know, because of what we've been taught, and, and you know, God doesn't always heal, and, you know, there's something wrong with money, but people are going to need their health. I mean, you don't want to lose your health. You want to keep it. And if you have, you want to go back and get it with God's Word. And your faith can make you whole. It made everyone else's uh, whole in the Gospels that came to Jesus believing. And our faith does the same thing. We receive healing if we need it and de determine it and be determined to walk in divine health, divine protection, that no evil should fall us, any plague come to our dwelling. It starts, about, starts out about what we say. And more we speak God's Word, the more we're going to believe it. The more confidence will become. The more fully persuaded we become, the more we speak the Word of God, the more we see ourselves in line with God's Word. The more we see ourselves enjoying the blessings that God promised us that belong to us in Christ Jesus. All the children of Israel had to do was go in the promised land. But you know, they got afraid. And they got talked out of it. And so often, Christians have been talked out of the blessings of God, talked out of their healing, talked out of living in victory, or victorious life in Christ Jesus. Not being taught about who they're in Christ Jesus. And not being taught that, cause the person to have an insecure, become insecure. You know, they don't, they don't have any confidence that God wants them to have these blessings. I know you, when you share it with them, they, they look at you like you're either talking a foreign language, or that's not for us. If that was for us, I'd have heard about it by now. But Jesus told us, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The problem is we just didn't hear the word. 
We heard things about the Word and things about God. Maybe we heard a scripture or two in church, but we weren't really taught how to apply what, what God's done for us through Jesus Christ and how to receive it, how to apply it to our life. See, how do we apply the Word of God to our life? By, first of all, hearing it, accepting it, receiving it, make a decision I'm going to act accordingly. Acting like I am what God's Word says I am. Acting like I have what God's Word says I have. Acting like I can do all things through Christ. The one way we do that is not talking anything negative. He says we can do all things through Christ. That's what you and I said. He says he supplies all of our needs in abundance. That's what we said. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. That's what we said. He said, I want this, I need that, I want that, I need this. No, these are words that we need to, you know, not use. <laughs> Eliminating from our vocabulary. And just to see ourselves prosperous and blessed. Our life goes by the way of what we say. And as we praise God and thank God for what his word says about us, what his promises say about us, the more we'll see ourselves with it, the more we'll enjoy the benefits of God that he purchased for us and gave to us. And Abraham, he, he became very wealthy. How did this all happen? He believed God. And God was one that made him prosperous. And we're an heir of Abraham's blessing. And we want to thank God that we are. And, and use the scriptures like Galatians 3, 13, 14. Do you read those? And verse 29, do you read 3 John, verse 2? See, people that are against prosperity, they don't read them and claim it. They just try to find a way that they're not going to work for us. And God, God didn't mean what he said. I mean, how mean to say that about God? That he didn't mean for you to have good health. That he didn't mean for you to prosper financially. Because if that was the case, look what happened to brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. They never did get healed. And they worked all their life for Jesus and never did prosper. Well, that don't change. You know, God bless those people. But that doesn't change God's promises. I mean, there's people that's been good people their whole life that never got born again. What about those people? You're going to say that you don't have to be born again? Because, I mean, after all, they were good all their life. And they good did, they good, did, good, did uh, good deeds and helped humanity. And look all the humanity efforts they did. And, you know, they could have went to hell because they were so good. So you're saying you don't need to receive Jesus? It's okay as long as you do a bunch of good works. And, you know, that's another way you can get in. No, we're, we can only get in through Jesus. And, you know, you can be dogmatic about that because that's what the Word teaches. Well, the same goes true when it comes to healing and health. When it comes to pros prosperity and financial blessings, we don't base our belief on what happened to someone else or what didn't happen to someone else because they didn't receive, they didn't, re they didn't receive their healing, they didn't receive their miracle, they didn't re receive their prosperity. That doesn't delete or change the promises of God. Sounds cold, sounds hard, but hey, you've got to be determined to stand against all the reasons, all the human reasons which come from Satan to talk the believer out of receiving from God. You can't listen to those things. You can't entertain them with your mind. You just want to be, have your mind set firmly, believe that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed, and God wish above all things that I prosper, and I'm blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out. And see ourselves as prosper, see ourselves prosperous, and see our lifestyle prosperous. See ourselves living in victory, enjoying the blessings that Jesus bought and paid for. And God wants us to have all the blessings that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to us. How did he do this? Well, he did this through his death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus became poor that we might be rich. Jesus took our sick and disease. Jesus took our sins. He never committed any sins, but he took our sins. So we could become the righteous of God in Christ. We became righteous because of what Jesus did, what he gave us. We, don't, we can't earn righteousness. We can't be good enough to become righteous. We become righteous through receiving Jesus Christ the Lord and his blood cleanses us from all sin. And God sees us as justified, just as if we've never sinned. God sees us in Christ Jesus. That's how we're to see ourselves, in Christ Jesus, ruling and reigning in Christ Jesus, walking according to what the Word of God says, walking by faith and not by sight. Yeah, you know, we're to live by faith. We're to walk by faith in Jesus' name. And every day of our life, we'll be faced with challenges to get us to give up or quit and not believe God's promises, but we run to reject those in Jesus' name and just bombard our mind with, with scriptures, with the Word of God, with faith teaching where it reminds us this is what the Word of God says. The Word says I can do all things through Christ, then I need to talk that way and act that way. And speak to my body and call my body healthy and whole. And speak to my finances and call them blessed and claim money in Jesus' name. Jesus said, For verily I say unto you that whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast to sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall what you saith. We'll, we'll have what we say. That's why we need to speak the money and tell the money to come to us in Jesus' name. And not expect anything else except God's best 
and, and the blessings he's purchased for us and belongs to us in Jesus name think what all Jesus went through for us so we could have it he took the curse upon him he took the sins of the world upon him he took poverty upon him he took sickness disease upon him that he was beaten unrecognizable so we could have divine health Jesus suffered so much so we wouldn't have to suffer if God did must have good health he wouldn't have put our sickness diseases upon Jesus if he wanted if he wanted us to live in poverty he wouldn't have put our poverty upon Jesus he wouldn't have told us we was the heir of Abraham's blessings. He wouldn't have made that provision for us. He just would have left it out. And I think sometimes many Christians or many ministers wish they had left it out because they have to spend the rest of their life trying to explain it away. And don't explain it away to people. Just tell them to receive it by faith in Jesus' name. It's God that's the one that has more than enough. We're not gonna tap him out if we ask for you know $5 billion. He's more than enough. And we need to see this way see God this way see that we have abundance in our new covenant that we have and as soon as we hear promise from God's word let's jump out on them and receive him be zealous about it be excited about it this is what God's word says and you're you know of course you can't wait to tell somebody you know whatever promise you just recently got whatever it may be and, and then you notice by their facial expression oh boy they're not on board with this you know they, they they're you know you hear about a storm coming you say, hey, let's just take authority over they look at you like what yeah, let's just take authority. Let's use the name of Jesus. Bind this storm is trying to come. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know. There's, well, you see there, that's kind of surprising when you run across that. If you haven't run across it before, you just got a hold of, well, Mark 11, 23, 24. You're excited about it. You talk about how you can pray and believe God, receive your desires, man. And you tell them about it. They're another Christian. They're born again. You're thrilled about it. And you tell them and all of a sudden you realize they're not thrilled about it. Now, what are they going to do? They're going to try to explain it away from me and take it away from me, too. No, you, you know, there's always the Job's comforters that come around. And we just have to realize this, this way this is. It's going to happen. We don't believe it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And just don't let that affect you. Don't let that deter you from receiving from God. You just be like blind Bartimaeus. Just cry out the much more. They said, hold your peace. Don't talk that way. You know? And see, people always want you to use the word if. If God wants to, he'll do it. He's in charge. What in the world is he in charge of? I mean, he runs heaven. He gave us dominion over this earth. That's why things got in a mess, because mankind didn't use their authority. That's why we, you know, Adam and Eve got expelled from the garden. They didn't use their authority. They were told, Adam was told, that he'd been given dominion over this earth, over every creeping thing. He was to keep the garden and till the garden. But he didn't. He let the serpent talk to his wife, and he should have stopped that but he did now the same with us when the devil talks to us respond with our covenant we have that God gave us through Jesus Christ and speak God's word and claim what God's word says about us and you create and declare every day I'm a I'm, I'm blessed going in I'm blessed going out Abraham's blessings are mine I started doing that I had even no idea what it even meant but I knew I need to do it it's like saying by stripes you're healed you don't have to wait till you know what it really means just start out with it and claim it you know, children don't understand nothing, but they sure know about toys. You know, they want them. Well, they like things that's on their level. And they get so happy, you know, when they get something new. Well, with us as believers, we're God's children. And we get so thrilled when we hear some promise. I mean, we should, right? I mean, the first time I heard 3 John verse 2, I mean, to me, like, I just want to do handsprings. Because I was just thrilled to find out God wants me to prosper and be in hell. And uh, 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes are healed. That's thrilling. I can do all things through Christ. That's thrilling. We have the mind of Christ. Those are promises that just th thrill you because you can't wait to implement them, to get them, to, uh, to act upon them and receive them so they'll work and manifest in your life. And that's how it is with God's Word. We stay enthusiastic about the promise. This is what keeps us motivated. This is what keeps us fully persuaded, what keeps us fully convinced and, and confident. So when you have problems, uh, promises you're more confident when you face problems because you realize you know this thing's got to leave in Jesus name it can't stay I refuse it in Jesus name I won't accept it now the thought will come to you you already got it I refuse it in Jesus name I don't accept it in Jesus name because it's written and begin to say what's written like Galatians 3 13 Christ has redeemed us the curse of law being men are cursed for us written curse from a tree I resist it in Jesus name I'm redeemed from curses in the name of Lord Jesus Christ is getting written. 
Uh, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and even flee. I resist this in Jesus' name. It's written, no evil shall fall, and you shall play come on my dwelling. Just keep reading the same verses. You can't use them too much. And the more you use them, the more you become, a, it's a habit that you do it. That you be, because you put it in practice. You just kept rehearsing, kept doing it. And it just comes a way of life. The first thing something comes up, you hear something, you hear something, you hear somebody talking about something, you see something going on. No, I take a throw of that in the name of Jesus. And speak words of life to your life. Decree and declare that God has prospered you, that he's teaching you how to profit. He's teaching you how to have wealth and riches in your house, that you're always learning more from God. The Holy Spirit's the teacher of the church, and, and so he's going to share more with us. As he sees us that we're hungry, you know, he keeps giving us more. You know, if you're feeding a baby, you know, you're, you feed them as long as they're wanting to eat. Well, God delights in his children, delight in his commandments. And knowing that by we walk in love, we go open ourselves up to share all that God has given us. And that's why the reason God wants us to walk in love, because what we have in us will come out. And what we have in our life will be able to give away. It's thrilling to give to other people and be a blessing to them. Yeah, just, you know, gives them something to think about, that God is good because he uses us to be a blessing to other people. And Jesus bought all this and freely gave it to us. Think about all the Jesus who went through on the cross. And he did that for you and I and the whole world. He did that for you and I so we could be blessed, so we could go forth and rule and reign in Christ. He gave us his name, the name of Jesus above every name. Think about that. You give somebody your name. He gave us his name. And think about this. He gave us his promises. They're called exceedingly great fresh promises. And by those, we know what God's will is for our life. He baptized us in the Holy Spirit, speaking other tongues. Now you can pray in the Spirit, wherever you're at, pray for the known and unknown, and build yourself up. we got so many benefits that belong to us. There's no reason not to succeed, because Jesus did all the work for us. What we're doing is convincing ourselves, this is what God wants me to have. That we don't talk ourselves out of the blessings of God. See, there'd be that other voice would talk to you, well, you know, you already got enough, and you know, you should, if anything else, you'd be greedy. Whatever it says to you. I mean, Satan will throw out anything you can to get you derailed. First, he didn't want you to ever hear about the promise of God. So he usually had to keep you in some dead church where you didn't hear anything. But then, you know, somehow you escape, got born again, baptized the Holy Spirit, started hearing other messages ministered to, to you. And that's when life started coming to you. That's when you started getting excited. Praise God, you couldn't wait to hear the minister preach again. And, and tell stories and show you how, show you how to, to put God's word in action. And you learn so much by that, that you can apply God's word, by, like praising God and thanking God for what his word says about it, that I believe I have in Jesus. Father God, I just want to thank you that by straps in Jesus, I'm here. Father God, I just want to thank you that I, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm the righteous of God in Christ. I thank you all that Jesus did for me. And just praising God and thanking God that way. Thanking God in Jesus' name that I'm prosperous and blessed, Lord. I just want to praise and thank you, Father God, that you bless me with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. I'm blessed in every area of my life, all because of you, Father God. All because of what Jesus did on the cross. And he did this all for all of us. And as we stay thankful and grateful and show God appreciation and stay hungry for God and more of God and grab a hold of God's promises, and use them and not reject them, but think, you know what, this is what God promised, this is what he said, that if he says it, that's what I believe too. And just receive the engrafted word and not reject it. Many dear people, bless their hearts, rejected when they heard the message. They didn't, you know, they heard about prosperity, they rejected it. They heard about healing, they rejected it. They heard someone talk about speaking in tongues, so they didn't listen to minister anymore. It's amazing you now when you begin to inquire of people why they don't go back to their church anymore or why they don't listen to some minister you gave them some CDs or whatever a lot of times they don't really tell you the truth about it they kind of hide it you know they well you know I didn't feel real right about listening to the person you know or I got my minister or my pastor you know okay but are you growing are you making progress or is your life just kind of stagnant spiritually even I, what, what you believe is you getting your results because if you just leave up everything to God nothing's going to change he gave us because he's already given the responsibility to us for our life and, and to change this world. And we need to use our authority that God gave us and use the name of Jesus and just continually speak and declare this is what God's word says. When Jesus spoke to that storm in the Gospels and he got the wind to calm down and the waves to calm down and brought back that brought peace, that's what we do. We speak peace to our nation. 
and to this world and take authority over the things that people are doing in Jesus' name. Bind that devil and take authority. Say, Satan, you can't steal, kill, and destroy off my nation in the name of my family off my, or off my church or off my ministry or whatever you got, off my business. No, you're always making sure you keep Satan bound from getting into your life, into your family, into your ministry, into your church, into your business, whatever it is you have, into your mind even. Say, no, my, my, I have the mind of Christ. Say, I cast those thoughts down in Jesus' name. And decree and declare my nation is a Christian nation, strong Christian nation. Jesus, Lord, of the United States of America. I decree and declare our bills are paid. I decree and declare the United States of America is prosperous. And we're in a mighty revival now, right now. And I decree and declare our country is debt free in Jesus' name. And stand bold and stand in faith against all the onslaughts that come to steal, kill, and destroy. It's up to us because we're the ones here right now. It's up to us to protect our nation and, and guard these blessings that we have with the words that come out of our mouth just by saying, no, Satan, you can't steal, kill, and destroy all my nation. I refuse it in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, we get the right people in office in Jesus' name that's going to lead us to follow you, God, in Jesus' name. That no Christian loses their Christian privileges and blessings they have that you've purchased and gave to us. See, so often the world is after the... The believer, it's called Satan's behind it. Well, you know, it's the person is not the problem. It's the devil behind the person or in the person. So we have to always remember we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Otherwise, we become exhausted. We'd lose the match. We're no match for Satan in, our, in the flesh. But we come against him with the word of God in the name of Jesus. We come against problems with the word of God in the name of Jesus. And we just keep on decreeing, declaring this is what God's word says. And I'm going to stand fast on him. And just, you know, find promises of God's word. You know, like I shared with you a few times before, you know, we got this divine healing scripture sheet. If you got it, read it a few, several times a day. I mean, you can get more of them, more scriptures in your Bible and add to it. But highlight them in your Bible. And then go back. When you got some time somewhere, you're waiting. You can go back and read healing scripture yourself and have communion every day. Remind yourself that you're healed, that you have a covenant with God, that you're prosperous in Jesus' name. You know, get, get, take your bread and take your cup and partake of communion and just remind yourself what Jesus did for you and thank God that he did redeem you from poverty, that by his stripes you are healed in Jesus' name. And every day, take time to read Promise Yourself. All we, we all need to do it. You know, we go over this pre you know, frequently, but it's important that we do it. It's really important that we claim the prosperity that God bought and prayed for it, paid for us and freely gave to us. Instead of praying that God will send money in, claim it. I mean, it's okay you're praying, but claim it. You can put the, take the next step here. Decree the money come to you in Jesus' name. Tell Satan keep his hands off your money in Jesus' name. And believe God, pray, seek God. He teaches us how to profit in Jesus' name, how to succeed in life. There's so much that you and I don't know. We don't want to, you know, life's like that. We don't want to end up, you know, getting to heaven, never did take advantage of all that Jesus did for us. There's so much you and I don't know. And we need to be open to be learning every day and not be intimidated to, to claim God's promises. You know, no matter what people say, what they're going through, you claim them, you believe, you receive. Many of your people go without, but that's no reason for you to go without or me to go without. We just say, you know, we're gonna be praying for them, their eyes be opened up, they see that there's much more. And so when you, you know, when you get a negative response from somebody because you just shared some promises that really got you excited, you know, don't take it personally. We're talking about God's word, they're rejected. More than not, more than rejecting you, they're rejecting God's promise. That's why they need us to pray for them, that their eyes be opened up. Father God, we pray today, we thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you, God, for what Jesus did for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. There were new creatures in Christ Jesus. We're blessed going in, blessed going out. We're everything the word of God says we are. We thank we're heirs of God, joint heirs of Christ Jesus, heir of Abraham's blessing. And Father God, I decree each viewer, Lord, each one of your children, Lord, are blessed because you've blessed them. Their needs are met. They're healthy and whole. In Jesus' name, we stand together in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you haven't received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, I want to read the description and want you to pray a prayer with me. Or you're not too sure. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Well, you don't want to think that way. You want to know for sure. And I'm going to read these three scriptures to you from Romans chapter 10. And then I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me. Or actually repeat what I say. It's not what I say, it's what God's Word says, but we're going to lead, get there in just a moment. And so I hear Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, verse 13 says, That if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now verse 10. For the mouth, confess me, for the mouth, uh, 
For the heart man believes righteous, the mouth confess made salvation. Now verse 13. For whosoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we believe in our heart and we confess our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Okay? Now let's do this now. Let's say this again. Just say it after me, please. God, I come to you to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart that Jesus crucified, took my sins, took my judgment sin, died on the cross, was buried, and God, you raised him dead in his life today. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. Jesus, you're my Lord, and I believe you're alive and took all the curse that was on mankind upon yourself. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me from going to hell. And God, I thank you now. You're my Father and Jesus, my Lord. And I thank you, God, that you gave me your only begotten Son, who is Jesus Christ. Amen. Good for you for praying that. You could email me. Let me know you prayed it at jesserichministries.com. I want to encourage you to watch these videos here. They're live on Facebook at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 6 in the evening. 7 o'clock in the evening, we've got a calling conference where you're going to hear a little bit of word pod, um, also some uh, sometimes testimony and prayer requests, and we have communion. If you got a prayer request, that's when you want to call in. 7 o'clock at night, plus call in here the word and fellowship with the rest of the saints via phone. Uh, so we can do that and take advantage of that. If you got if you got YouTube, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jesse Rich Ministries. It's free. And subscribe there, and you'll get notifications when those messages are uploaded there. And they'll be a great help to you again. Now, the information about the call-in is on our Jesse Rich Ministry webpage. Uh, no, it's on our webpage, too. But it's on our Facebook page. Yeah, Jesse Rich Ministries. And it'll tell you the phone number call and the access code. Look forward to hearing you tonight. And also want to encourage you to come back to Facebook at 6 o'clock tonight hear another message. Enjoy being the day. Remember, you're healed, you're delivered, and you're blessed of God. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Mind. I love you and praying for you. And remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.